Hey friends, Shay here. So this is going to be my dark romance readathon vlog. It technically starts tomorrow, but I am starting early. The reason for that being is I finished up everything that I was in the middle of. So I, rather than reading something else, I've already read a bunch of manga today. So I'm going to dive into Den of Vipers by K.A. Knight because this is also the longest book that I have. Granted, it's my focus for the majority of the weekend, but I do want to get it started because if I'm going to DNF it, I want to maximize the amount of time I'm going to have for my other books. So I'm starting now. This is my plan. This is what's going on. This is the, the whole spiel. So I know that this is my mafia and that it has a lot of content warnings. Um, I'm not remembering all the specifics of what those are now. And I believe it's also like reverse harem where she's going to end up with all of them at some point. So I am intrigued. And if I remember right, she sold to these guys, like to pay off dad's debt or something. It's something like that. So once I've read a few chapters, I'll come back, tell you more, give you my feelings, tell you whether I'm going to keep going or not, all that good stuff. Okay, so I've got a better idea of what's going on in Den of Vipers. So I was right. Um, the dad's in debt with the Vipers. And so he sells off his daughter. They're estranged. But she's a total baddie. She owns a bar. She defends herself. They send goons to pick her up because they think it's going to be easy, right? Well, she knocks all the goons out, drags them out into the alley, calls the police. Police pick them up. All that good stuff. But the police are like... You got to get out of the crap that you're in when the chief tells me to to back off because, you know, they're in debt. They're in deep with the Vipers as well. So, yeah. Anyway, so these four brothers, these Vipers, had to come and pick her up themselves. And it's interesting because she fights back and they like it. One of them, Diesel, he's very much a sadist. He very much likes the idea of pain and gets off on it. So that's going to be a thing. And yeah, so she just got knocked out. They're about to pack her things and take her with them. So yeah, that's what's up. And I'm really interested to see how this next little bit is going to go. Because I honestly think the dynamic, she'll fit in well with them because of the kind of life that they live. But yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. But so far... I'm intrigued. I'm not turned off to any of it yet. Just intrigued. Okay, I'm now 15% into Den of Vipers, and it's a trip, but an enjoyable trip. I'm enjoying it so far. Just thought I'd come in and let you guys know that, yes, I'm still on board. So far, I'm not wanting to put it down. I do expect it to get kind of weird here soon. I am prepared, and she's been slammed against the wall twice. So, Take that for what you will. And yeah, I'm just, I'm going to read as much as I can tonight and I will check in with you guys in the morning. Hello, good morning. It's officially Friday and officially the first day of the Dark Romance Readathon. So I am officially 35% of the way through Den of Vipers and I'm obsessed. I love the Vipers so much, and the one that I expected to rub me wrong the most is the one I'm currently the most in love with. So that's Diesel, for anybody asking. I love Diesel so much. Diesel is a crazy son of a bee, but I love him. I love him so much. And I just adore these men and how they really want to take care of Roxy. And Roxy is starting to kind of settle in with them. And I really love the dynamic of all of them because she has a deep connection with all of them so far. Um, she's done sexual acts with three of the four at this point. And the fourth one, he's, it's Diesel and he's more of a sadist. So I think, you know, he knows to just wait his time, but at the same time, He's very, very gentle with her, and that is so not his normal behavior. And she can, like, keep him in line, and all the brothers have, like, not done well with that in the past. So just the power that she has over Diesel is amazing. And I I did not think I was going to love this book as much as I do. 
<laughs> I mean, I was hopeful that I was going to at least like it, but I'm obsessed. Um, Steve went to go get us some breakfast this morning, so I'm waiting for him to get back. I'm going to get a little more reading in. I'm going to eat, and then I'm going to, like, do some things to take care of myself this morning. I'm going to go get my nails done. I've got some filming I need to do today, too, so I'll probably do that in a little bit, and I'll actually finish getting ready for the day. I'm, like, body showered, D.O., like, I'm clean, but I'm not, like, hair done, makeup done, ready for the day. So, yeah, that's kind of my plan at this point. I might put in some B-roll because I am going to go get my nails did, and I'm so excited for the design. I can't wait to show you guys. Hello, I'm back. I don't feel like filming today, so I'm not going to. I will film tomorrow <laughs> when I first get up in the morning before I can get too wrapped up into other things. So with that said, I did get my nails done and I love them. Um, there's a little more of the dots than I was expecting. I was expecting it to kind of hug the side of my nail a little bit more, but I still love them. I think they're still really beautiful and really cute. So that's going to be a fun change. I've never worn black polish ever. <laughs> So this is a very new thing for me, but I'm digging it. it. It's a vibe. I figure Dark Romance Readathon is the perfect time to just let myself do this. And it, I'm enjoying it so far. Almost halfway through Den of Vipers now. I just finished chapter 32. And I am having a fantastic time with this book. Like, I expected it to be a lot worse than it is. If you can deal with the dubious consent and the fact that one of them is bonkers crazy and like there's definitely like knife play with him like yeah it's it's dark it's taboo but it's fun I'm having a great time with it um I don't think it's the best book I've ever read and I do think it's a little overly long but I understand why at the same time because She's trying to make each relationship, like each of her Roxy's relationships with the guys, substantial. And I think that's what why this book is so long. At the same time, Roxy is kind of a character that's a little hard to love sometimes. Just because she is so rough and tumble like these guys are. And she has to be a little bit crazy herself to handle their crazy but at the same time, if she was a character that just, like, laid down and took whatever they dished out, it would not work. So, for that, I'm here for this book and enjoying it. And I'm going to dive back in. I'm really having a good time. Going to be my plan for the foreseeable future. Unless something really shocking happens, I may not check in until I finish. I don't know. But um, another thing I forgot is I'm almost done with Sweet Ruin by Cressley Cole. This is... Um, I forget what number in the Immortals After Dark series, but it's the one that I'm currently on. I'm on my first read through and I am loving it. I am almost finished. So if I end up needing a break f for my eyes, I might put that on and go do some other things for a bit. But when I come back, I will have finished something, whether it's Den of Vipers or Sweet Ruin. I don't know. But once I finish something, I will be back. So <laughs> I just finished chapter 37 and I'm crying. I did not expect to cry reading this book. But you needed to know that happened. So I turned on the camera. I'm going to get back to this read now. All right. So I have officially finished Den of Vipers. And I ended up really enjoying it. Um, in this one, I'm going to give it a four star. I do think it was overly long. I mean, I like me a long book. Don't get me wrong. But I do think with this one, it was drawn out just to be drawn out. It None of it was, like, necessary or it didn't really add much to the story. I mean, you got more sexy time, so that's really all it kind of added. But honestly, like, you could have alluded to those things happening and easily shaved 100 pages or more off of this book. And I do think that would have been to this particular book's benefit because it did feel long. There's one thing, there are long books that don't feel long, but then there are books that do feel long that aren't that long. I mean, I've read Sanderson books. You all know this. But... Those don't feel like long books to me, even though they are, because the pacing is really good. I think that's the biggest thing, is this one just felt too long. 
but I did enjoy it. I would pick up more K.A. Knight in the future. And yeah, so the book I was the most worried about, I ended up really enjoying. So the rest of this is going to be stuff that I've read things before these with these authors. So yeah, I'm it's going to be a good time. I'm really excited. I've been reading all day, so I'm probably going to take the rest of the night off from reading. And then from there, just kind of pick things up tomorrow, see what happens. Good morning. It is officially a Saturday morning. I have not gotten around to makeup yet, but I wanted to update you on my reading last night. As you saw through my clips there, I did read the entirety of Withholding the Key by T.L. Mart. This is book three in the With Emma series, and this is the conclusion to this serial. Honestly, it could have all been one book and been a little more condensed, in my opinion, but I understand the author doing it this way. Um, it did make sense with where the breaks were. It's kind of like when I read my Helen Hard books, like they come in a trilogy for the set of characters, and that's kind of what this was. Now, when it comes to the ending, I wasn't the biggest fan of her choice of ending, but I'm okay with it. So this whole series has been like a three and a half, four star all the way through. Um, I might revisit it all and read it all in one sitting kind of a thing and then decide if I'm going to keep it or not. But yeah, like overall, it was pretty good. It was very suspenseful. You didn't know what was going to happen. It was sexy. It wasn't as taboo sexy as the first installment was. But at the same time, there was some really dark stuff going on in the first one. But it's pretty vanilla by the time you get to this third one. So We'll just put it that way. Um, the other thing that I got read is I did finish Sweet Ruin last night after I chatted with you last. Um, I was just in a reading mood, so I just kept reading. My husband is playing a video game he loves right now. So, But yes, Sweet Ruin, I did finish and I did love. Um, Rune and Josie are some of my favorite characters in the Immortals After Dark series now. They both have fought for so long that sometimes they can't see what's right in front of them. And I love them for it. And they love each other in such a way that works for their dynamic that it's just amazing. And I adored it. I continue to love the Immortals After Dark series. I have started the next one, Shadows Claim, but I've heard it's just kind of meh. So we'll see how that one goes. But yeah, so all I have left book-wise is my Helen Hards. And then I do have a couple volumes of manga. Um, I'm about to do some breakfast and a little bit of YouTube watching. I haven't been watching too much the last couple days because I've been in a reading mood. So I'm going to do that. Um, I do have lunch with a girlfriend today, so I'll get some of Immortals After Dark done as I drive to her. Um, she lives a good, like, 30 minutes away, so... It's just been forever. We haven't seen each other. It'd been a while even before the pandemic started. And it's just... We haven't seen each other in ages. So I'm excited to see her and catch up. So that's going to take up a good chunk of today. Um, so I don't know how much reading I'll get done today. I might get the manga volumes done. It depends on when I get back from spending time with her. Because we may just hang out for hours. I don't know yet. <laughs> We're still figuring all that out. So anyhow... It's going to be a good time. I'm enjoying what I've read so far. Like I say, Den of Vipers was a surprise. I did not expect to love it like I have. 
And these two were good. Like, um, Sweet Ruin was amazing. Withholding the Key was good. And, you know, there's basically... Okay. Basically, there's three potential love interests in this. And one is really bad to her in the beginning. So, like, I understand what happened with that. And then the other guy thought his wife was dead, but, you know, spoiler, she wasn't, because that's how these things go. Um, and so they got back together, and so that left her with just the one guy. In my head, like, it's just the all four of them, and they work it out, like, and other people don't come back into their life, and, you know, she had already forgiven the guy for the bad behavior, um, because he didn't know... It's one of those where you can clearly see he'd never experienced true love in, in his life or unconditional love. And so he kept putting conditions on his love of her. And it's really sad to see how that works. But I've also experienced that. So I I guess I relate to him. And seeing him come around was a beautiful thing. And I really was liking him a lot by the end. So even if it had just been the two guys and her, I would have been okay. Like, they could have all worked out. But no, he had to be all alpha. I don't share. Brr, brr, brr. The one she wanted. Like, the the main one. The one that she got. Like, the one that she's together with at the end. I'm being very vague and not saying names <laughs> in case you've read the first book. But yeah, like, it's crazy. But... Yeah, I would have just rather them all been together by the end. <laughs> okay, so it is much, much later since we last chatted. I've since taken off my makeup. I am in my PJs. I am done for the day. So I wanted to get on here and chat with you guys. I didn't do too much reading. I did go spend a bunch of time with my friend that I haven't seen since before the pandemic. We spent a long time catching up and... We went and had some lunch, and then she's a school teacher, so she wanted to show me her classroom. Obviously, I don't have any footage of that because I'm not going to film in a school that's not where I teach or anything like that because I'm not a teacher. I don't feel like that's appropriate, so I'm not gonna, I, I didn't film anything there, obviously. And then when I got home, I wasn't ready to read with my eyeballs. I didn't, wasn't ready to hold a book because I did so much of that yesterday. So what I did is I played some Minecraft and I was listening to Shadows Claim because I did start that. And I'm enjoying it so far. Um, it's not my favorite couple at this point. And obviously, with the whole setup of this particular book, there's some dubious consent going on right in the very beginning. She's intoxicated. So that felt a little icky. But at the same time, he didn't fully understand. She didn't fully understand. And so they're working through that now. And that's like a big part of what's going on. There is a tournament aspect to this one, and I do typically like that in my books. So that's been fun. But um, I forgot to check before I started filming this clip of exactly how much of that I have left. So whenever I'm tired of reading with my eyes, I usually just listen to an audiobook and like go play a game. Or um, you, I use the Happy Color app on my phone a lot while I listen to audiobooks, just so I keep my hands busy while I listen. Um but yeah, that's kind of what's going on. Um, I am ready to sit and read with my eyeballs. Oh, I forgot to mention, I've been doing a buddy read with Christy. She just started a channel. I will leave her linked down below. And I finished our buddy read of Emergency Contact today, which is the second Mary H. K. Choi I've read. I do have Yolk, and I do intend to read that soon. But I really enjoyed this. Solid four stars. There are some things that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, basically, um, Sam's ex-girlfriend, she was a piece of work and she wasn't truly necessary, at least a plot point that was chosen involving her wasn't necessary. I honestly think you could have gotten what you needed from Sam's storyline without that. So, I don't know. That's just me personally. So, with that said, I am now going to pick up Follow Me Under... Um, I might just film clips kind of like I did last night, just to let you know as I'm progressing. Um, because this is book two in a series, I don't know that I'll have too much to say until the end, but this is Helen Hard's kind of Fifty Shades inspired story. 
So um, he's a billionaire. She's naive to lots of things. And she was warned off by this about this guy from her employer in the previous book. So it'll be interesting to see how the next set of things plays out. So I am excited. I do believe the last book in this trilogy is also out. So I'm very excited to see how this is going to go. Okay, so I just finished Follow Me Under, and this has a really good discussion about being in the BDSM lifestyle, actually, um, about how there are hard lines for people and how people can get lost and caught up in things and lose themselves completely, and how... Brayden, the hero, refuses to let our heroine lose herself. And she's feeling very lost right now. But I do think a lot of the conversations that happen in here, because there's a lot of things going on. Um, her life kind of got upended in the first book, and now this is kind of the fallout of a lot of that, all wrapped up in her learning more about the BDSM lifestyle with Brayden, the hero. And so... She's kind of caught up in the thrill of the lifestyle to her detriment. And so he's like, I can't, I can't give you this. Um, there's something else you have to figure out before we can get back to this. And he basically kind of has to make hard decisions, even though it hurts him just as much as it hurts her. And so it's going to be a really interesting book three. I really wish I already had it so that I could read it. But anyways, really, really, really enjoy the direction of this series. I've never read Fifty Shades. If you guys want that kind of a reading vlog, let me know down below. I can make that happen. I really like the conversation that's happening. Um, that is one thing that Helen Hart does. She goes at topics and talks about the hard things or the things people don't think about when they're reading it in fiction. And she brings those out. And so it's so well done. Really enjoyed it. Solid four. Um, and I'm definitely going to want to pick up book three as soon as I'm not on a buying ban. Because I am right now. And so I'm a little sad. But anyways, that leaves. Um, I've got potentially the... I think I want to stick with Helen Hard. I really enjoyed that read and it happened so fast. So, so I think I'm going to start the next Steel Brothers trilogy. I might read some manga tomorrow as well. I don't know. It's pretty late tonight, so I don't think I'm going to read anymore. But once I've read some more, I will come back and I will chat with you, which will most likely be tomorrow. Okay, hi. It's officially Sunday. It's like noonish, twelve thirty-ish, somewhere in that time frame. And I am currently working on Awakened. Um, I've been having a pretty lazy morning. It's taken me a while to get to reading. I'm only about forty pages into this, and I'm enjoying it so far. Um, Dale has a temperament kind of like Archer from Archer's voice except he doesn't have he's not mute he chooses to not speak 
And this one has a really interesting concept to it. Our heroine has what they call uh, da, 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 synesthesia, I want to say is what it's called. So her brain processes information with several different senses. Um, in her case, it's sounds have colors and colors have sounds. Um, and sometimes smells have sounds to her. And so it's really interesting because it all centers around wine. Um, Dale has kind of taken after his uncle Ryan, who runs the vineyards on steel acres in steel on steel land and whatever, the steel vineyards and stuff. And Dale's taken after him because um, his kids didn't show any interest in it. And so it's all kind of going to Dale. Um, Ryan's about to retire. And so Dale's supposed to be taking over. But um, his sister Diana has brought a friend um, to be an intern for the summer. And that's Ashley the who has the syn synesthesia. So it's interesting so far. I think this is going to be a very different trilogy than some of the previous ones. But there's definitely hints of Dale's tragedy and that there's more there than we even realized. I have a hint as to what that could be just because I'm familiar with this saga so much and kind of what Helen Hard plays with with it. So it's going to be a really interesting thing. So I am very, very excited to keep going. I'll share thoughts as I go along. Hope you've been enjoying the B-roll clips. I've been having fun adding a little more than I normally would in this kind of a vlog. But when I've got more to say, I'll be back. Meow. Meow, meow. Uh -huh. Okay, so I just finished Awakened by Helen Hart, and I am really enjoying the direction of this particular series. Um, I still don't know Dale's ultimate secret. I mean, I know what he went through when he was younger because I've read the rest of the series, and I really like Ashley. Watching them together doing wine tastings was really nice. This takes place over the period of a week, and they go from zero to 60 pretty quick. And that just is a trope that Helen Hart tends to have in her books. Things move fastly, especially with the steels. Um, I'm going to pick up the next book, Cherished, and get that started. Um, Steve's downstairs watching TV, so I think I'm just going to go cuddle him and read for a while. And I'll come back probably when I've finished Cherished or when I feel like I have something to say. But, you know, they had this really wild night and then he's an idiot about it. And that's kind of where this book leaves off. And so now I'm really interested to see where the next book is going. So I just finished Cherished and things got very intense here towards the end and we learned a very crucial piece of information about Dale's past that we didn't have before and it connects to his trauma and we still have Ashley fighting very hard to be with Dale and to give him what he needs. And he keeps pushing her away, keeps pushing everyone away. And now he has one more reason to push people away. And scary things are happening right now. I'm really interested in diving right into the next book to see how this trilogy wraps up. Because she writes her characters, love stories, and trilogies. 
And yes, very much looking forward to how she's going to wrap this up. So I'll talk to you more probably once I've finished. And yeah, um, the kinds of content warnings you want to look for in this. Um, sexual assault, sexual assault of a minor, PTSD, um, very severe depression, um, bouts of anger. It's basically these are chuck full of everything related to trauma because our characters have dealt with trauma in some form or another throughout the whole series. So expect that kind of stuff if you're going to pick up a Helen Hart book. Um, but yes, I still enjoy the dynamic. Um, this is book like 17? 17 in the Steel Saga. So you could start at the beginning if you want and go from there. I think a bunch of them are on KU. I haven't looked in a while. But yeah, I'm going to pick up Freed, which is the next one. And then I will chat with you guys once I finish. It's Monday. <laughs> I know I kind of left you hanging on my Sunday stuff and I didn't really take a ton of clips compared to what I'm going to be talking to you guys about. So let's just dive in. I have finished four things <laughs> since we last chatted. So let's go. I finished Freed by Helen Hard and I really liked most of how this resolution came together. Um, there was one thing that you know, parents took out of control of the adult child in confiding in the love interest. And I wasn't the biggest fan of that. But considering the dynamic of this family, it kind of needed to happen that way. And especially the dynamic of Dale, our hero, because Dale's trauma, he was drowning in it. And this book especially did a really good job of him figuring out that running away from his problems isn't the answer. And I love, 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 love the way that lesson was taught because there are consequences for running away, like very big consequences for Dale. I'm not going to spoil what those are, but um, like he's not in jail or anything. It's nothing like that. This family has too much money. It's almost mafia style, the kind of money they have. But... I really love and adored Dale's story, and I cannot wait for the next trilogy. I believe that's going to follow his brother Donnie, which makes me really excited because they're probably going to go through a bunch of the kids now, and I'm actually really excited for that because I really, this family dynamic is just something that I really enjoy. I mean, this is book 18. I have bought physical copies of all of these. So that tells you something about how I feel about the series. Though they aren't necessarily like the best written books I've ever read, I always find myself greatly enjoying my time anytime I pick up a Helen Hard book. And especially with this Steel Brothers series, the first book, I had just heard somebody or I saw it at the bookstore and I'm like, I want to try this. And it blew me away because it was not what I was expecting it to be. And so I've just been down this rabbit hole ever since. And it was really fun to get caught up on this series. And then I had my normal monthly I can't sleep night. <laughs> so I read three shorter novella length. They're each about 200-ish pages. I read three of them because they were on my Kindle. And my husband prefers if I stay in the same room as him when I can't sleep at night so that if he wakes up because he's worried about me, he can see me and see that I'm okay. It's it's just an us thing. So don't ask questions. I don't. Um, so the first one that I finished was Mafia Captive by Julia Sykes. 
In this, we have Ashlyn and Joseph. They meet. He's running away from his mafia life. He's bartending, getting paid under the table so there's not a money trail, things like that. Doing pretty well for himself. And he sees Ashlyn at the bar. He sees her for weeks and weeks and weeks. And he is greatly, like, drawn to her, attracted to her, all of the things. And she, him. Anyways, this guy, this douche canoe of a dude, basically oversteps with Ashlyn. And so um, Joe steps in and saves her. And he likes feeling like her white knight. And they start hooking up. And then Joe's best friend, Marco, finds Joe, says, hey, you have to come back. And the best thing you can do for her is leave because war is about to happen and you are bringing danger to her. And so Joe leaves. Doesn't say too much to Ashlyn about it, just leaves. They break it off. He's gone. What happens is the other mafia family still find out about her And so Marco goes to get her and he has to kind of force her, kidnap her kind of thing. And what happens is this becomes a menage between the three of them. Now, we don't get any scenes of the three of them together within this book, despite the cover. But that tells you the dynamic. So Ashlyn and Joe are the primary couple because they met first. But she once she gets over her fear of Marco and his power their dynamic is really sweet towards the end. I do think I'm going to continue with this one just because the dynamic of the couple I find very, very interesting. So with that, let's move on to the next one, which I did not enjoy as much. And this is Possession by Jessica Hawkins. Now in this, we have Lola and Johnny who are an established couple. Things are feeling kind of bland and dry. She doesn't feel like she's getting what she needs out of the sexual relationship, but she feels like Johnny saved her from a bad life. And she's been in love with him kind of ever since. And they've been together. Basically, this man named Bo, this big tycoon kind of tech tycoon dude in a suit comes into their dive bar that they love. It's it's a big one in L.A. Um, I forget the name of it. I should have written it down. But it's like, hey, it's a reference to a song. I can't remember right now off the top of my head it's hey something at this dive bar they meet she's a waitress and Bo is very drawn to her because she is a very different type of woman than he's used to seeing and he keeps flirting with her she he does she's not wearing a ring or anything her and Johnny aren't married they're just dating and then Johnny comes out of the back and Bo figures out that she's taken but he still continues to pursue her At the end of the night, because he basically stays there all night, stays till close, puts an offer on the table to um, Johnny and Lola to pay enough money to buy this dive bar because it's about to be sold because it's not been doing well for one night with Lola. And Johnny, the boyfriend, agrees to let it happen. And from there, like... I just didn't end up enjoying this one as much. I do not think I'm going to continue. Um, By the end of this, clearly um, Lola and Bo are very drawn to one another. And but she feels like this obligation towards Johnny. So you can kind of see where it's going to go from there. Clearly, she and Bo will be together at some point, whether that's in a thruple with Johnny. I don't think so, because there's another girl at work that's been heavily pursuing Johnny. She has kind of like proprietary like touching and stuff of him. So I kind of suspect that there's something going on behind the scenes with them. And he plans on dropping Lola once he has the dive bar, which sucks. And I kind of just don't want to read it. I kind of don't care. I mean, if I'm wrong, correct me down below. But that's the impression I'm getting from the story. So yeah, didn't love this one. Don't think I'm going to keep going. But another series I want to keep going in is um, the first book is called Looking For It. This is by Allison Lint. And in this one, we have Sadie. Sadie's getting ready to move into her friend's house, leave the place where she's been. And she has this uh, male-male couple. And she has always had the biggest crush on Jax, who was her brother's friend growing up and um, his partner, Grayson. Like, she's had crushes on both of them. They're wildly attractive. And... While they're packing her stuff and helping her, they find her box of toys. 
for sexual toys. And they're like, have you ever used one of these with a partner? And she's like, well, no. Isn't it better to use them alone? He's like, if if that's your thought, then you've never had the right partner to use them with. And basically says, I'll teach you how if you want. And so he propositions her and she actually takes him up on it. And so like in the middle of moving and stuff, they take time to hook up. But Grayson's there. Grayson watches. Grayson gets off on it. So basically, these two, Grayson and Jax, have wanted to invite Sadie into a relationship with them for a long time. They've both been wildly attracted to her. They've both been flirting with her incessantly. And her brother, I think the next book is about him, actually, which is kind of why I want to keep going, basically told these two dudes, keep your dicks away from my sister. (laughs) But obviously they don't. And the dynamic really works. But um, she gets to a point where she balks against what's against like societal norms being like, but I can't marry you both. Like it's not legal. And I don't want to have to choose one of you. I don't want to come between you, all those kinds of things. So the discussions being had about menages and throuples, I think are really solid in this particular book, which is why I'm looking forward to continuing on in this series Because now I think the brother, Chase, is going to possibly enter an existing relationship or he and his girlfriend are shopping for a third. I'm not 100% sure how that one's going to go, but I loved the dynamic here and had a great time reading it. Okay, so that catches you up on everything (laughs) I've read since I last sat in front of this camera. And yeah, it's been really good. Today's kind of wild. Um, I need to go pick up groceries in a little bit, and then I have my doctor's appointment to figure out if I have to have surgery or not today. And that's later this afternoon. So I don't know how much more I'm actually going to get read. I do need to film my wrap up, and I do need to take care of some things. So yeah, um, there's a good chance I might read the couple volumes of manga, but like the Jamaica Kingpin one, I would love I'm, I'm hoping to still read that this month, but I don't think I'm going to get it read in this vlog just because today's the busiest day so far of this readathon for me. I have too much going on. And where I didn't sleep last night, I ended up crashing at about 6 a.m. and I slept until like 11. So I got up, I got going. It's now noon and I have to go pick up groceries in an hour. I have to film. I need to edit. I need to go to this doctor's appointment. I just don't know how much time I'm going to have. So if this is the final clip, I love you all. Thanks for being here. Put a black heart down below um, and tell me your favorite dark romance because I really do enjoy dark romances. I just don't pick them up as often as I should. I mean, I had all these just sitting on my Kindle, you know, if if they're darker taboo, because I wouldn't necessarily call the last one I read dark. It's just taboo. So, but yes, any of your dark and taboo faves, let me know down below. Bye.